everybody. Just wanted to chime in and uh, talk about a few things that we've, been, that we've got going on right now. Um, it's been a while since I did a video. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, hope everyone is getting ready for Thanksgiving, which is next week. So, salute. Having my little Cuban coffee now. Mmm. My uh, Don Ramon blend coffee, by the way. So, if you guys like it, let me know. We can ship. Um, nothing better than a cigar and a coffee. Mmm. I should have used the torch, but I decided to go with a soft flame this time instead. But uh, anyway... So, uh, let's see, this past weekend I was able to go to see Jeff Borsowicz's farm, and I'll go ahead and include a video here. Uh, it's over in Clermont, so outside of the Orlando area. He's got a beautiful uh, tobacco farm. It's a small farm. Um, you know, he basically grows uh, some wrapper for some of the cigars that he's making. Um, my understanding is they get the tobacco, they blend it with Nicaragua, they send it over there, you know, they send the tobacco there for processing, and then it comes back. Um, so, you know, good for Jeff. It's a very expensive operation. Uh, hard to do that here in the States. It's very labor intensive, uh, not cost effective, but he's having fun doing it. And uh, he's a farmer at heart, so he's having a great time. I was honored uh, to be out there for that barn smoker event. My son and I had a great day. It was really a lot of fun. Yeah, Florida sun grown tobacco. Jeff's farm here in Claremont. It's pretty cool. Grown in Florida. Secret is the dirt. Oh, sorry. So I brought these little seed heads here. Everybody, you can just take a seed head off and pass it around. We got a little show and tell and stuff here. But this this planter here has these trays on it. Grab a just grab a pot off the top. Here, pass these around, guys. Yeah, why do they quit growing tobacco in Florida? That's a great question. It got too expensive. That's the only reason. Florida was growing great cigar tobacco, but labor is very expensive here compared to other countries. And so um, it was just the, the economics of it. Yeah, well, I tell you what, we're only able to do it for one reason. That's because we got the retail stores. So we're able to sell all our plants. If you guys don't mind volunteering, passing some of those around. So listen, what you see out here in the field right now, the tobacco's at a 60-day stage, right? You'll notice some of the plants have this kind of leaf structure at the top forming, and if inside it you see a bud, okay? So that is the beginning of a flower. Now tobacco grows incredibly fast if it's if it's in the right conditions, okay? This this uh, bud stage right now overnight can sometimes grow up to six inches, all right? Overnight, real fast. Not every plant grows at the same speed, though. If you look, I pulled this one out here. This was planted the same day as some of those plants that are five feet tall. And you'll notice this one's like 10 inches tall. Well, it's something, it either didn't get close enough to the drip irrigation or its root just didn't make good soil contact. Something happened. But that just gives you an example of when the, when the tobacco's right, it's going to grow real fast. We planted this tobacco a little earlier in the summer than we normally would because we were, t we were working from the barn smoker date back okay so um when we planted it was super hot it was like uh 95 degrees where it's really the reason when tobacco is in the nursery is called a nursery because they get taken care of like a baby right as soon as you go to transplant it it's the most stressful time of its life because you're putting it in a field direct sun it gets hot uh, you know, it's struggling for water. It's struggling to get its roots growing. So believe it or not, because we had the plant kind of early, we lost a lot of seedlings because some of the water that comes through the drip tape was like 150 degrees as it came out. So that's just a little too hot for the little plant. So we lost a few. A lot of people ask, hey, why do you got sunflowers in the, in the field? And that's, just, believe it or not, that's to replace the holes where the seedlings died. And we wanted to make it look pretty for you guys. So the, so the sunflowers are here for no other reason than to make it look pretty. And then you guys are welcome to take those sunflowers home today. You can seriously go pick whatever you want, make a little bouquet, bring it home. And then the other reason we have it, some of you had our tobacco honey that was used on some of the stuff that we had for lunch today. Um, I have a neighbor right behind us that has beehives and uh, he raises or, or makes honey off of some of the flowers that we have here on the farm with the tobacco flowers, especially when we're done with the crop. 
When we're done with the crop, that plant will try and make us flower again. It's really interesting how tobacco is. It's a survivalist. It's like everything it does is to try and just reproduce itself. So that's why when you pick the top of this plant off, if we don't put something called sucker side on it to stop that growth from coming back, it'll grow three of these things. It knows it's been broken and it'll push seeds because all it's trying to do is put seeds in the ground to make more plants. Now this is what the seed heads look like when you let the flowers go. It's a really big bouquet. And then you'll end up with this pod. And so anybody has these pods, just pick one off. Do me a favor, I need a volunteer. I need a hand. All right, so if you take one of the seed pods and you look at the size of the seeds, they, they look like little pepper grains. Tobacco seeds are some of the smallest seeds in the world. Mustard seeds and tobacco seeds. Now what's interesting, if I told you to, you know, like go try to plant those in a row, you could never do it. It'd be like, you know, you just can't even see them. So that's why we send these things off to be pelletized. They go from pelletized where it's a little bigger to work with. They go in those trays right there. We ride behind the tractor. We already have the rows prepped where the irrigation is run and where there's something called black plastic mulch, which helps hold the moisture in. And then we plant them one by one, uh, 30,000 plants at a time. And you repeat that process and then, you know, get it going. After, after you do that, a few of them die and you got to go back and re replant again. But that's just part of the struggle. So 60 days in it, we get into this topping stage, pull the tops, put the sucker side on it. And then starting like two days ago, we start harvesting the big leaves. Now, you're welcome to handle these leaves, touch them, try not to break them though. The leaves on good tobacco is sticky. So it gets, it, it's, it's gummy and that's what you want. When you guys look at a cigar and you see the wrapper, it's got oil and it glistens. That's that sticky gum that's on the tobacco. You want oil, you want tobacco that's alive. When you have tobacco that has a lot of oil to it, you're gonna get a lot of sheen and a lot of flavor. If you get tobacco that's kind of like just dry and doesn't have that, they, you guys call it in Spanish grasa, right? Yeah, so they're like, oh yeah, grasa, we like that. And so, so when they, you know, that's when they're touching and feeling it. Cause once, once we cure it, it'll still have that, especially once you, you put a little moisture to it. So this is a leaf that's ready to go. Our seed variety that we use is Cuban Corojo seed variety. Um, we found it, you know, our farm is the closest to Cuba and we run them, it's about 110 feet above sea level here, which is what it is in Pinar de Rio. And so Cuban Corojo seed grows best for us because we're very similar to it. So um, it tastes great. There's a drawback to using uh, Corojo seed from Cuba. It's a smaller leaf. Most of the stuff, like if you hold this up to what's done in Nicaragua and stuff, it's usually about four inches longer, which means you get more pounds per acre, which uh, when it comes to the economics of growing tobacco, somebody asks why you don't grow it in Florida, that's another thing. You know, pounds per acre, the cost per pound is crazy high. So that was a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, it was definitely an experience to go see Florida tobacco. You know, um, there hasn't really been Florida tobacco since like uh, the 1970s when they used to grow it up in the Quincy area, Tallahassee area. So it's pretty cool that he brought that back. Another piece of Florida history that uh, had been ignored or forgotten, I should say. Now a lot of you uh, probably never knew there was a town called Havana, Florida. They pronounce it Havana here. But this town is where the uh, Florida tobacco industry, the Cuban seed tobacco industry, actually uh, started from. The uh, original cigar tobacco in Quincy, Florida, is not too far that way. They grew a lot of shade-grown tobacco there. But in Havana, they were growing the Cuban seed tobacco, and uh, America had a tax, an import duty, on tobacco coming from Cuba. So the tobacco here in Florida, these farmers were a little bit, uh, a little sharp. So what they did is they incorporated this town 1906 and they called it Havana. So what they did is they brought the tobacco here. That's where it was processed and packed and shipped. And so the cartons would say cigar tobacco from Havana. And they would actually charge imported tobacco prices. And, uh, you know, back then you didn't have the Internet, you didn't have TV, you didn't have uh, ways of communicating. And there were thousands of cigar factories across America, all over the place. And they always paid a premium for Cuban cigar tobacco. So you could take Havana tobacco that was grown in Florida. Factories wouldn't know any difference. They charge the imported duty, the imported price, make a little extra money. So uh, that's the story about Havana. A lot of people don't know it. That's why it's called Havana. 
Again, they call it Havana here, but a little interesting tidbit of uh, information. Now, you will find no more farms here. They haven't grown cigar tobacco in Florida since uh, the 70s. Last crop was grown in 1977. There's a couple tobacco warehouses still here. Yeah, I, uh, I got to actually check out the tobacco farms in uh, Quincy and Gadsden area. Gadsden County, uh, Quincy, outside of Tallahassee some years ago. And there's still, there's still some tobacco barns up there um, from back in the day when they used to grow shade wrapper. They used to grow, um, you know, shade grown tobacco up there. As a matter of fact, the Oliva family still has a farm up there. Not Oliva cigars, Oliva tobacco from Tampa. Uh, they still have a farm up there that they really don't use it for tobacco anymore. Uh, they use it primarily now for um, for hunting, but it's pretty cool to go up there and see the old barns, the old tobacco barns. I'll see if I can dig up some pictures and put them here too, so you guys can see them. Mm. The other thing is, um, I was just on the Coop Show, Cigar Coop, and I'll include a link for that. Um, I think the interview went really well, so I'll go ahead and put the link in this video as well. So if you guys want to see the video, you can go right in there and check it out. I think it was a great interview. Um, hopefully you guys don't fall asleep watching it. <laughs> a lot of good material. And... Uh, other than that, we're basically working on uh, our next cigar brand, which is Juan de Fuca, which is another old Tampa brand that we're going to be releasing hopefully next year at the PCA. So we're working on that diligently, trying to get that you know going. Um, as everything, everything takes time. And, well, you can't rush the hands of time like Carlito says, you know. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, stay tuned. And thanks for watching. All my best.